secret friends unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast number 454. This is your guide to the geek side in a palindrome. I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, joined by Charlie Carden. I am stealing the valor of a fictional character. Send all your hate mail to Todd's address. Here it is. <laughs> Off to the brig. <laughs> Off to the brig. No, this is me. Uh, and, and again, I think April turned the heat on. So it's getting warm. It gets really warm down here in my basement studio. So I might be losing this jacket. But this is my homage to General Hawk of the G.I. Joe team. And it had a rip tape that I have that is covered up in black to protect his identity. So, you know, we love the troops. The, the, the fake ones. Exactly. Thank you for your service, fake G.I. <laughs> Joe commander. Fake G.I. Joe. And my very cool West Coast Avengers custom tee, which I used to have a uh, custom t-shirt person that, I, that we aren't really that close with anymore. So kind of bums me out because when this shirt wears out, nobody gives any love to the West Coast Avengers. X, are those little like X-Pops? Yep. Those no, X-Pops little, little chibi guys. Yep, little chibi. chibi. There X-Men. you go. That's the word I was looking for. Yep. So chibi good. weeby. Yeah, good, good stuff. Well, we are uh, here and happy to bring you this wonderful hour of, of uh, entertainment or more than an hour of entertainment. But the other great work that we do over at patreon.com slash secret friends unite would not be possible without some of our top tier patrons. We love these folks. Uh, gives us the chance and the, the, the fundage and this the overall wherewithal to carry on. Uh, to make some of the great fun stuff that we do that would be on our friends with benefits level Corey and hd john sedorf the awesome phoenix sisters cosplay brendan myers and a brand new person uh, a co-host of marks over in holocron who filled in for me one week uh when i was missing you know i i feel bad whenever i miss that show but it's you know it's it's mondays late sometimes my work schedule i'm not away from home so mark always does such a great job of finding people uh to jump in and host with he had master allen who is a guy who loves lightsaber stuff on this past week and they talked for two hours which i'm like Wow, <laughs> that's too late at night for me. But you know what? It's cool. And if they enjoy it, I love it. But anyway, I'm talking about Asian Sith Mistress. We talked about her last time, gave her her superpower, and we appreciate you. Uh, BFF levels, we as always have our OG uh, supporters, the awesome Nias family, Sean, Stella, and Henry, and dear friend Missy Merchant. So thank you for what you guys do. Remember, you can go to Patreon, blah, 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 patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite for a free seven-day trial of our offerings. And uh, if you like it, we certainly hope that you stick around. Um, and there's a lot of sticking around uh, going on in this cover that you found this week. Oh, my goodness, Marvel 3000. What do we got going on here? Yeah, Marvel 3000 was a weird imprint. I didn't even know it existed at the time, but it did. Uh, so essentially, we've got the original Guardians of the Galaxy. It says, explore the Marvel Universe in the 30th, 31st century with the Guardians of the Galaxy. It says, this, ama- this amazing Spider-Man on Mars. And we've got the, the Guardians of the Galaxy, which you will not recognize compared with the MCU Guardians of the Galaxy. But- uh... But uh, this is a weird group. I can't even necessarily pick out. There's Yandu. He's yep. he's kneeling. Yep. Um, is that uh, is it Vance Astrovic or Vance, Vance Astro? Astro. Charlie yeah, okay. 27. He's the squat guy because I believe okay. he lived on a planet with gravity that was very strong. So we became like short and sweet. Uh, Alita. Uh, yeah, you got some different ones here. Yeah, so. Nikki. Nikki. That's just a Nikki. Ooh, Nikki. <laughs> oh, or like uh, Nikki Computer Blue. Isn't that Prince? Yeah. Talon. <laughs> And Yellow Jacket, so I'm not exactly sure what Yellow Jacket that would be. And also, now, Star Hawk was involved in this as well. Well, there was certainly a Yellow Jacket uh, that was one of Hank Pym's identities, but then it got handed off to a, a young female who was villain. Um, but that's that obviously doesn't apply to this, especially if it's in the 31st century, which, of course, the Guardians of the Galaxy in the MCU parlance c- clearly takes place now. So, uh, But yes, they're standing around a very back-to-tank-like tube with a tore-up spider-man outfit which the mask is floating somehow like it's it's being held in suspended animation oh i get it yellow jacket it's is it's not connected see. right so yeah i i didn't see that floating. there was a there was a little person down there ah, i, I saw that too no yeah yes i didn't but yeah so it's a spider suit it's tore up and yeah if they're on mars spider Sp- spider-man of mars wasn't spiders of mars wasn't that a bowie album 
This, I, is that really David Bowie? It's, it is. Yes. It's, is it's, that where it's, he is now? He is a mortal soul. Yeah. It's Spider-Man. Yeah. This is, and, and you know, everyone talked about, oh, the guardians of the galaxy are a big thing. But as we think about the guardians of the galaxy, like in, in things, they are like D tier list. I mean, they're well below Iron Man F. and people, think it was a big deal. That Iron Man right. got the movie. The fact that right. these guys, and it wasn't even these guys. It was like the version from like 2008. The, two, the, the aughts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which again, that's the only Marvel film that's really done gangbusters yeah. since Endgame. I mean, Shang Chi did okay, yeah. but Guardians Three was the only one that really blew the doors off. Yeah. And then, of course, now we have um, we have the Marvels being your lowest performer of of Marvel in, in, in quite some good time. And it, hasn't there been some talk like, oh god, it was the worst film, of, you know, worst performing film of all time? Uh, I still maintain it's the Flash, but then again, Indiana Jones was right there, so I don't know. Well, it's definitely the lowest performing uh, MCU film because now it's yeah. below, I think, Hulk, which is funny because you think like that came out how long ago, and Marvel wasn't now, even a really 15, thing at the yeah. time. So ago, yeah. yeah, and coming off a billion dollars of Marvel, the, you know, Captain Marvel to go that low, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. But, but it just imagine, Charlie. I don't think we've seen any of these characters. In... No, didn't we see? We Starhawk was uh, correct. Uh, Stallone. Yes. in guardians two and three Correct. um but yeah some of these characters just like i said the two in the background there with the big hair um yeah yeah <laughs> it's just... even yandu doesn't even look anything at all like you know right the yeah, he's... Cape, and he was kind of like yeah. a native uh, like a native american type character you know right a, the native and martin x isn't even in this either martin x is oh, like the, that, the, the, the guy, guy the sparkly dude yeah, yeah who was uh it was uh lex luthor uh in the movie uh, the uh, 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 blah, 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 blah. who's the guy who played Lex Luthor in Smallville? Uh, Michael Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the voice, and then yeah, I love the end of Guardians was great with all those cameos. You know, Michelle Yeoh was one of the Ravagers. Just good stuff. All right, well, enough down the gar- enough down the Guardians rabbit hole. But Todd, I have a prediction. I think in the 31st century, uh, you you won't be here. I won't be here. Uh, cockroaches won't be here. But I think our senior correspondent, news correspondent, Madam Webb absolutely will be still talking about the latest scoops without a shot of you know what down at the corner of hollywood and vine if it still exists if california doesn't fall into the ocean uh so let's go see what she's got for us this week now it's time for madam webb's rumors and news take it away boys thank you madam webb Madam Webb, I know this is your time to shine. You're getting ready for the holiday season. You're figuring out how to unlock all of those red uh, cauldrons to take the money out. You're getting a dog. You're putting on your green costume. You're getting ready to be the Grinch. So, Wait you know, a second. That's the Grinch. Oh, there you go. Well, awesome. Charlie, it's it was basically inspired. The Grinch was inspired by her. Uh, Dr. Was- Seuss and her went back and he basically she ripped him off. So <laughs> yeah. And then they had a tour of love affair my god most people don't know about that you like uh, the green costume she wore it's it's the truth oh my god well we kick off this week's news with some sad news we lost uh, a titan of the industry this week uh at age 101 so gosh uh sl- even even a little younger than madam webb but we're talking about norman lear uh pioneer of telephone television programs like all in the family which was 50 years ago which is just staggering uh so he was in his he was in his 50s when that show came out so that was even potentially later in his career also gave us good times which was just a biting uh you know commentary on you know life on that side uh of the line in the you know in the pro- housing projects of chicago what uh, the jeffersons of course which is mm-hmm. what spun off all in the family um but yeah for uh you know for you to, to look at him he looks like anybody's grandpa you know what i mean your grandpa or my grandpa so it just kind of looked like a regular old kind of general issue white guy um but had such lasting uh thoughts and process yeah maud mary hartman mary hartman mary hartman um what else what what, what are some of his other I mean, big programs jefferson's i believe because that was a that was a yeah. spinoff of yeah, that exactly uh maud i believe was a spinoff uh mm-hmm. one day at a time sanford and son sanford and son there we go yeah so he had like half of his work was uh about the the urban black community uh, in the 1970s, which is just, you, you just wouldn't necessarily pin it like that. So, but again, that was all in the 70s. So, so yeah, it, it, as I continue to skim through lots of work in the 70s, what did he do? What did he do after the 70s? Was he involved he in like show? Facts of Life or any of those type of shows? I don't think. Things. Did I'm, he even I'm get involved gonna... with? Uh, I mean, what was that? Archie Bunker's place. Remember that horrible spinoff where he ran a bar? 
Might be. Oh, okay. The look at this. In July 2021, on his 99th birthday, TBS announced it would be the developing a reboot of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Oh, wow. um, an animated version of Good Times to reboot. Oh, who's the boss? Okay. There we go. There's something. You did who's uh, the boss? Oh, I had okay. I had no idea. Yeah, I'm just again, I'm skimming through this. Okay, I um, got but again. Yeah, Luke oh, has a good stuff? link. Yeah. He did a show okay. called The Dumplings in 1976 with with <laughs> with James Coco. Uh, the Sunday Apple Sunday game? dinner in 1991 with Robert Loja. <laughs> Robert Loja. <laughs> the Baxters in 79. The Nancy Walker Show in 76. Uh, I'm trying to think the How 704 Hauser 19 in 1994 with um uh James from Good Times was in it. Uh. Oh, uh, uh, Amos, uh, John Amos, John Amos, yeah, um, yeah. We just watched, we just watched Die Hard, Die Hard Two as oh one God. of our Christmas movies, and you know he was a villain in that. Yeah, um, fa Facts of Life and Different Strokes. He was involved in those as well. Uh, he did um, something in the seven nineteen ninety seven called Channel Umpty Three. Yeah, I, I, I get, I get the feeling that Powers uh, That Be in nineteen ninety two yeah. with, uh, with a. Uh, um, David Crane, Marta Kaufman, about a DC show with um, Frazier's brother. Oh, Jorson, David Jay Hyde Pierce. Gordon Livid as well. Yeah. Interesting. Involved in this is the seminal This is Spinal Tap in 1984. Oh, was he? Yeah. So, yeah. So it's just. His last uh, show was the remake or the reboot of One Day at a Time on Netflix in 2017. Oh, I don't know that I, that I tuned into well, remember that. Remember to Fernwood tonight? He did that too. Right. My goodness. So anyway, um, and, uh, and, and, and simply put it a hundred years, uh, 101 years old. That's, uh, that's, that's just a triumph in living. Um, yep. cause I, I've never known anyone that old. So I think that that's, that's still that's active cool. and involved yeah. in creating John, John Williams is getting up there because he's still composing and he's in his right. upper eighties, I believe. I'm Betty White was working right up to the end. She was like a week or two. That's true. She was a week or two from turning 100. She was a and so grandma. That, yeah, in, in so much that she had like the cover of cover like the cover of People magazine about her hundredth yeah. birthday. Oh my goodness. So anyway, RIP to a great talent. Great so show. His stuff is still right. watchable. The stuff exactly. You know, and you can't say that a lot of that stuff of the seventies that you read those clickbait articles that you're like, you know, seventy worst TV shows of the seventies because and it was all stuff people watch because that's all that there was. So hey, so talk to me about uh, Godzilla. Now we're watching the. Um, uh, the Monarch Legacy of Monsters. You went to go see the new movie, but we got an article uh, about uh, King uh, uh, Godzilla X Kong. This new trailer. This thing was dynamite. We didn't. Did we talk about this last week? No, we didn't. So this is one okay. we that just dropped after we recorded. Um, oh, there we go. And so this is. It's weird because I think it's called the Monster Universe. I don't know what it's completely called. But it is interesting because we've got Monsters so many works. parts to it now because uh, we've got basically it all kicked off in 2014 with that standalone God uh, Godzilla movie with uh, Brian Cranston. We got Kong Skull Island. We got what was it? Um, Godzilla King of Monsters, mm -hmm. then Godzilla versus Kong. And now the uh, Monarch is where we're right. at with everything. And then um, we're getting this movie called Godzilla X Kong. Japan so is, also is, does its own stuff called the Toho universe, which right. doesn't connect. So Godzilla X Kong seems in, if you watch this trailer seems to infer that the X means they team up, but Correct. in like, like in that movie from the early 2000s, what's, was that X versus sever? <laughs> yeah. Sever versus X. <laughs> sever versus X. Yeah. Deep so cut. what was the, yeah. So yeah. Well, that was just, and it was called going ballistic, or it was ballistic ballistics. Yeah, it was Antonio Banderas and Lucy Liu. Was that who? Oh it was? my God! This seems like a movie we should we should cover for a bad um, movie. But but yeah. Well, and remember Batman X Superman? Not verse, or was it V? Was that Batman V? It was a V. It, it was a V. Oh, okay, V X. Yeah. So I, v, I, and, and, and even in this series, it seemed to imply that the because there was an earlier one on this Godzilla v, Kong V Godzilla whatever it is. So so X is potentially a multiplier so that indicates maybe a team up of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah Cause they're teaming up to take on a super. And I love in this trailer that Godzilla or that Kong is either wearing some kind of brace because he broke his arm or it's a gauntlet, or maybe he has a big fake arm or maybe he loses his arm and somebody has to hook him up with like a cybernetic giant. I, I couldn't quite figure it out, but it's yeah. only in the clips to the end. Cause if you look even on the screen cap as you're scrolling down, um, to play the trailer on this link that we have, you see like 
crystals in the background it's like but they look like kryptonite crystals so it's like is that you know the thing that killed superman or whatever but there's also green behind them and uh, you have godzilla you know has his spines get pink and shoot out and then he so he and kong are running together and kong's got this big it's it's yellow looks like it could be like like bumblebee's arm or something yeah it's just there's just a hell of a lot going on in this trailer yeah that leaves you with a lot of questions um uh not the least of which is why is you know whose baby is that <laughs> like george <laughs> santos is that your baby not yet <laughs> well it's funny because uh you know there's a world within the world so that like underground world they found where that's essentially where they have monsters and things of enormous size living within the core of the earth and uh, I believe Kong went there. We saw that Godzilla has been trapped because essentially they both of them at the end of the last movie teamed up and Godzilla essentially was the winner. Uh, they beat Mechagodzilla. And um, so at this point, we're opening up in the middle of the earth and we see that there is a new threat, which is another giant Kong uh, that is like reddish. But there's a bunch of them as well. And they find a little baby. And I don't mm-hmm. know, Charlie, this may be the thing. I don't know if that little baby grows up fast and becomes that threat because also it's also red. So that could be like someone Kong. Well, raised. it could be, or maybe, yeah. And can, you know, contextually, you don't know how much time has gone by. So maybe it didn't grow, you know, I don't, who knows how fast giant apes grow up. Maybe it's like, you know, they're like, uh, it's like dog years. I don't know. I don't um, know. but yeah, we're, we're getting this movie in, uh, in early April. Um, so this is even before I know we, we were you and John and I were talking about this being like, oh, this is going to be a big part of the summer movie season. It's not because our summer movie season starts uh, uh, the beginning of May, May right? Or something like that. Yeah. yeah Memorial Day. Memo- no, not Memorial Day. Beginning of May. Um, yeah. So th- th- this eclipses that. But um, yeah, April is uh, I mean, what I, I'm not necessarily thinking of any other giant, huge movies that have come out because no. you're in that weird spot where. You could have a big hit in first quarter. I totally get that. Um, but what happens in April, right? Like, you know, they're not, it's, it's not like a big movie going holiday or whatever. Yeah. No, there, well, I was looking at, there was a podcast I listened to, and they were talking about like May is kind of crazy because May 24th, which is Memorial Day weekend, there are like three huge films. There's like three big blockbusters, and then there's Garfield. <laughs> so, like, I think something will have to move out of there because it doesn't make any sense to have three big movies. Yeah. So, it makes sense to move something to April um, yeah. to offset it. But yeah, this is going to be a bit. I mean, it was funny because the last Godzilla versus Kong movie, it was like one of the big, big, like, post covid movies to actually do well oh yeah um, yeah yeah. So it kind of generated some things but the, the i don't know if you you saw the the joke about this trailer was the fact that the way they're running it kind of looks like weird because normally kong you get him running but godzilla normally doesn't run that way so it felt like it was like well, he's a weird, just he's like, he, he's too unwilling because he's got the little little t-rex legs right because he doesn't yeah. have big he's mostly Arms, bulk yeah. as yeah. opposed to you know he's got a lot of booty big. in the back end he's kind of smaller like a t-rex <laughs> got little, little <laughs> arms, yeah <laughs> Oh my goodness, that that is nuts. So, all right, moving on. Uh, we have a show uh, happening on Amazon Prime that is the only Spider-Man that normal people can cosplay because it is not a skin-tight suit. Todd, I know you're not a cosplayer, but I know there are certain characters you admire. But trust me, there's nothing more humbling and potentially damaging to your self-esteem than putting on a skin-tight anything. <laughs> so what's nice about spider What's nice about Spider-Man Noir is he wears pants, he wears a sweater, he wears a vest, he's got poofy arms on his shirt, and he wears uh, a mask, and he wears a cool hat. It's a great, it's a great cosplay. Either sweater or sweater vest. Yeah, because I've got the outfit. It's in a bit, it's in a bit in my garage. It's, I mean, take a look at, let me see, I'm trying to see if I can, here, hold on, hold on, I'm going to, I'm going to help you out here. I've played him in the video games. Uh, You have to. Here we go. Now, this version of the figure that I have did not come with a hat, but a subsequent version has. But here you go. If you look at, and, and a big trench coat. But if you look at this, he, uh, and they just built this off the old Nick Fury figure, but big old belt, big old, you know, his pants I thought were a little bit more crisscross. So this is a version, but if you look look at his, uh, see, he's wearing a turtleneck sweater. Kind of reminds me of your cap uh, jacket. Remember your cap jacket that has the flat? Yeah, the, the one I that. tried to 
The yeah. one that I tried to wear last week for about 10 minutes before I'm like, I'm dying. I mean, I already took off the jacket. It's just, it's either really cold down here or really hot. There's no medium down here in the studio. Um, so, but anyway, yes, that's Spider-Man Noir. If you're watching on the video, this is uh, the OG figure. He has a weird man doesn't too. kill. I do. Well, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, he, I mean, he's from, the 19, he's from the 1930s. He does not have web, he does have regular web shooters. But anyway, I always really admired the costume because it's a very normal human being friendly uh, kind of outfit. So anyway, dude named Steve Lightfoot, whose work I'm not familiar with, but it mentions Apple's shit, shit. Shantaram. Shan, Shan, Shantaram, there you go. And Netflix, The Punisher, all right, we know that one, uh, is signed on for co-runner for Amazon's live-action Spider-Man Noir based on the comic. This is very exciting to me. There has never been, unless I'm having a brain fart, a live-action Spider-Man program. Um, but again, yeah, Spider-Man Noir is from the Spider-Verse, actually kind of actually preceded the Spider-Verse, but it was a Elseworlds-ish kind of tale uh, where you have an Earth that during their 1930s, during their depression, there was a kid named Peter Parker, yada, 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 got bit by a spider thing, and then he became this hard-boiled detective. I'm dancing with the figure right now because I just can't help myself. Um, became a hard-boiled detective and crime fighter with spider powers, and he fought a version of Norman Osborn, uh, Felicia Hardy, uh, ran a speakeasy called the like the Black Cat or Pussy Cat or something like that. I haven't read those stories in years, but it was all it was always of my of the Spider Man Spider Verse characters. He was always one of my favorites. So this is super cool. I love it. So uh, yeah, in the animated in the animated Ultimate Spider Man series, he was uh, voiced by uh, Milo Ventimiglia, and then we also saw him obviously in Into the Spider Verse as well. He was Nick, Nick Cage did the voicing there. Um, but this is fun. So this is, I feel like I've heard about this before. This is not like brand new news, but now somebody is actually participating in helping get it made. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And Sony doesn't have a streaming service, so they can put their stuff anywhere. And, uh, I still don't understand the rules of, you know, you know, obviously it's live action is all Sony, but so is the Spider-Verse film, which is animated. So it must be anything in film. But then now this is a TV series. I'm a little confused because some animated Spider-Man stuff is on Disney as well. So I, I don't. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the older, it. The, like the the legacy stuff is certainly, well, but and then it, we're getting the we're getting what the uh, the uh, the the show on Disney Plus that's coming out, which is what freshman year. Oh, freshman year, yeah. So and I don't I, understand I, it. So and they Disney Plus just yanked the uh, the, uh, the late uh, two thousand spectacular yeah that got yanked and I don't know that I ever ended up watching it I feel bad wasn't uh, was that the one that um, Neil Patrick Harris was Peter Parker uh, no that was the MTV series which is it was a weird thing but yeah I, I I definitely that was very like late nineties ish because I remember watching a bit I of that I think so. I bought you spectacular the yeah. DVD. <laughs> bless you. No, yeah, thank you. No, you bought me. I do have it on digital because you did buy it for me. So it's okay. it's on my there voodoo. You so you yeah. can also go revisit it so, if you so choose. So this is going to be written and executive produced by Oren Uziel, who did The Lost City, which was that movie with San was it Sandy Bullock? Was it that yeah, movie? Sandy Bullock and uh, uh, Tatum, Channing Tatum. Yeah, was so that, maybe, wasn't that them? This, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so maybe this is where. Sony can do well with Spider-Man in a different, not being a movie, not being horrible, maybe doing, yeah. you know, a not series could be work. I don't know. I'm just hoping because Spider-Verse is the only thing that is good. And then the, it's yeah. like, the, the rest of the spum better. Go. Yeah. I hope we get something good. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Cause the only live action enduring success that spider-man has 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 been under the yoke of of disney obviously with the partnership but it's been yeah. part of the mcu it's been a tom holland film so yeah there's always a hope now we didn't we didn't that that's the breadth of the news we have we don't have anything about casting we don't have anything no. about production um so based on that you can expect to see it in three to five years <laughs> maybe 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 two, maybe two to yeah. three years so um but yeah i think that that's pretty exciting okay um You'll appreciate this because, you know, you're, you're a Wolverine guy, you're an X-Men guy. So Ryan Reynolds is leaning really hard into screwing with people on social media with the uh, fake spoilers for Deadpool 3. Um, so why don't you take this one? This, this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, you know, um, Ryan Reynolds uh, has been trying to get people to avoid putting spoilers up for Deadpool three, because they're doing a lot of physical shoots. When you do that, you have less privacy mm -hmm. versus doing it like in a closed studio with, with green screen screens. Right. So because he's so mad about, you know, he's, he's trying to put a spin on 
uh, the, the fakes and everything by posting his own fakes, which I like because some of the fakes he's put out there are hilarious. Like there's one where it's the predator just hanging out. Uh, I believe there was one. It was it was Urkel in the background. They could do it because <laughs> so... he's, he's Disney. <clears throat> they could, they, yeah, oh, that's right. That's right. TGIF is all. Yeah. Disney. Yeah. 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 So well, and really, the predator as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So they're talking about it looks like uh, we could be seeing the return of X-23. So that's Daphne Keene uh, from Logan. But then they're also talking about Logan's actual son, uh, which was, is it Dakin or Dakin? I, I remember reading something about Dakin. Rockin' with Dakin. Yeah. <clears throat> Horrible character. Rockin' with that da- Man, I use that. Yeah, I use that expression all the time. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, <clears throat> most important thing about Deadpool three uh, is for fans of the MCU. That's all we got in 2024. They uh, right. to be because of the, the meritorious writer strike, uh, which again, we strongly support and I'm totally fine. But yeah, the last time we had a year that had no MCU content at all was, was 20, I think it was 2009, 2010. One of those, no, cause no mm-hmm. Iron Man, Iron Man two came out in 2010 the first Iron Man and Ed Norton Holt came out in 08. So in 09, they had nothing. Um, so yes, there is a year in recent history where there was no MCU content. So I know everybody can just, everybody can just chill out at least, at least, you know what? At least it's for a good reason. Um, so yeah, so it's this should be a blast. And this it. will be in July. We'll get this movie. So that's fun. Yeah. I yes. did not yeah, know exactly. and, and, that they and, confirmed and, this. Yeah. Um, did you know that I, I didn't know any of these casting? It says here in this this article I've got. It says yeah, it. Um, also been confirmed is Jennifer Gardner as Electra, Wesley Snipes, James right, Marsden, right. Famke Jansen, Patrick I Stewart, Ian McKellen, Daphne Keene, and even singer Taylor Swift so among great. those rumored to appear. So are these all true? It's gonna be Daz- Dazzler, right? Uh, it, know, well, it says it? it's confirmed and it's a decent source, but I mean, again, Deadpool is real famous for its you know, fast fire cameos. Remember in the second oh, yeah. one, how he was in the X mansion and behind him was the open door and it had all the yeah. first class X men. And then he just pulled the door shut. <laughs> so, but that, you know, that's a cameo. They were all, uh, ostensibly, they were all, they were all in the movie then. Um, yeah. So I don't know, but it, you know, at least it'll be fun. Um, and you know, it's a big tilt because this is a Fox property that is transitioning over to exactly. Disney Marvel. Now that's wholly owned and it's the first one and you just believe in your heart. It's still going to be fun. And isn't that really what matters? I and then maybe so. that's what Marvel that's needs. What I, maybe yeah. they need like a resurgence of something that's not the formula they've been using. This is fully right. on Deadpool. Well, I mean, the R rated. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the formula is death. You know, I mean, look, look what, look what's happened in the last, my God, end game was, was four years ago. It was in 2019, um, almost five. It'll be five by the time this rolls around. And you know, what do they have the show for it? The peaks and valleys, but a lot of valleys, you know what I mean? So yeah, it just, yeah, you can't, don't, don't make me bust out my pizza analogy because I don't need to say it because you already know it, but I'm right. Yeah. You keep feeding people the same thing. Eventually it's going to be like, I'm good. I'm go, I can. Go watch, I can I'm wait. Go watch Godzilla. Or I can yeah, skip. And go and watch, yeah. yeah, and that's and again with the proliferation of uh, this, you know, it's the snake eating its own tail with the proliferation of Disney Plus showing that same stuff. People are like, "Nah, do I want to spend a hundred dollars to take my family to the movies?" Or, you know, it seems like those windows just get even shorter. And then, you know, day and day, like when we were in the middle of COVID and we got, you know, Black Widow. That just, I don't know. I, I could go on, but I think you get it. So hopefully this is something that helps restore a break, a, a break to the program. Balance to the force. Well, uh, I'll jump on this one. And again, Todd, I know this is not your world because you're not a figure guy, but there was a uh, there was a fan stream by Hasbro this week. The only line that I really collect anymore at all is, is the G.I. Joe classified. Obviously, I talk about it all the time. But they did their biggest pre-order drop yet it's two four six eight nine figures it's like the old days have returned usually a a wave of something in in modern parlance is like three or four figures so this is this is over over twice as big Uh, 1.3 times as big um but no we got drops for it and a lot of these were pretty much previously known because they've been oh it's a digital render it's name only but going from left to right in this image we have uh, bookending these nine figures, we have a 60th anniversary generic soldier guy, and then at the other end, we have a 60th anniversary generic Navy SEAL guy. 
Easy pass for me. But, Todd, you'll appreciate this because you like the weird ones. You have Big Boa uh, going far <laughs> left. He's the yep. Cobra uh, physical and uh, – phys- I would say phys education. He's the phys education teacher of Cobra. He's the gym teacher of Cobra. <laughs> He's the teacher of Cobra. You have Airborne, who's from a class of 83, classic character. You have a redeco of Rakondo, who is from the class of 84. Great I have the – yeah, I have the Tiger Force version, so I'm not going to bother to replace with this. But you have two brand new sculpts of Duke and Scarlet in the retro line. And the retro line cracks me up because it's the latest example, and Tide, you can appreciate this working in a world where you deal with a lot of retail environments. Walmart had the exclusive rights to a series of eight figures that were redone in a retro style, and they completely bungled it. I mean, I picked up their Lady J yesterday for five bucks, and it's a $25 figure because yeah. they can't sell them. Um, but I grabbed a couple for my toy store because I have a toy show next, to- toy show next weekend. Um, these are beautiful, but they're no longer retail exclusives they're being sold on the on the regular market and they're, they're fantastic I'm, I'm really excited about these uh next we have quick kick and again this borders on the i collect eight from the 82 series to the 85 series quick kick was an 85 series but he is still very weird because he's a guy with no shirt and no shoes no and, service and, and some yeah, some throwing stars and a big sword uh then you have the techno viper Who's kind of weird, but he's also, he's out of my range from the 87 series. Uh, so these are all pretty sweet and they're all pretty easy to find. So Todd, you're not a figure collector. I get it. But if you were to pick one of these, I think I already know the answer. You, you have to choose one to buy. What's it going to be? Oh, wow. So many choices. Well, I don't understand him and doesn't mean I can't love him. And that is Big Boa. He oh, is Todd, it's like it- it's like you and me don't understand you, but I do love you. But one call out, Charlie, why does Scarlet have like two extra ponytails? I don't she, understand it, that. It's weird. Cause yeah, you're looking at the, at the pictures at the bottom. Oh, there are, there are no, Oh yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, because that's a great question. Um, I think potentially that if you put her like in the dragonfly, which is a has that's going to come out next won't summer, fit. then it, it won't fit. Yeah. Even though what's funnier about the dragonfly, which uh, April and I actually bought two of them because we're going to hang on to one and sell it eventually. One of the unlock characters you'll appreciate this is a scarlet knockoff from like the South American market called Glenda, <laughs> which was not a character I was aware of at all. And when you read her, her bio on Joepedia, they were like, Glenda was blah, blah on this mission. At the end of it, she got killed. I'm like, well, then why is she a figure? <laughs> we never, never knew forget. about her. She, Charlie, we never, never forget. You know, we're not doing, but yeah, the Scarlet's a great example. And she comes with just a shit ton of accessories. She comes with a crossbow with four different arrows. Shit. I, that's um, one conundrum, she had, right? She has a little side. You see the side pocket thingy? Mm. Uh, it goes in there. So it's like a holster for arrows that she wears on her waist, which I think is where I didn't know that that was a thing. Well, well, I mean, like you as a collector, they always come with a ton of shit. Where do you pull oh, the shit? That's a great question because I was because I pulled a, a Cobra Commander off my shelf this morning because my his tank is coming this week and that is Cobra Commander with it. Um, I have little um, uh, snap Tackle lid boxes. bins. Oh, no, okay. snap lid bins. And I have like five or six of them, and one is he- one is heads, one is hands, yeah. one is weapon, maybe Star Trek weapons, one is maybe uh, guns, one is like weird blast effects. And so when I go to, s- like if I'm replacing the figure and I'm going to sell it, then April and I will sit and we'll dump it out on a tray and we'll try to find little accessories so that we sell it complete. Do you like label them on top over top of it to make sure you no, know who's who's? No, no, I just, I showed you that website yesterday, the Frank Perkins, the action figure 411. It's all there. He's got pictures. He's got pictures like these that, so if I was to sell the Scarlet one day, boom, I pull up this picture. I know all the accessories she's got. Frank's Easy. nursery and cla- crafts. Frank's exists. nursery and crafts. So anyway, so yeah, big bow is for you. I get, maybe I'll get you one for Christmas. We'll see what happens. If you're, if you're a good boy. <laughs> was he like, was he like, uh, like fridge perry's like nemesis <laughs> he was he was such a minor character oh, and he cool. came out he came out in that 1987 series where things were just getting like oh no had, he was the rocky he was the rocky he was probably he was and yeah. it was rocky was they were it's actually the, talking to stallone about doing yeah. a figure yeah and the deal fell through so i think they might have taken whatever mold is he's got, turned into he's this got dude. punching and he gloves. does if you look at the figure he comes with an alternate head where he's beat so up weird. looks a little bit like stallone so um, but yeah he was from that 87 series where they also had a dude named crystal ball who was inspired by stephen king they had a guy named raptor who was a falcon trainer who had wings and a it's just that's when things were just that's why i don't collect 
beyond like the 85 86 series. What's he up to? Same year, same year, 1987. <laughs> and Crockmaster, they had already had a figure of him. So yeah, I don't do the real weird ones because you just kind of need to draw a line somewhere. I just like the I like the stuff you saw in the cartoons. That's kind of my. Oh, the, they the weren't in the cartoon. No, no, oh. none of those were. Okay. Yeah, because it was the cartoon ended in '86, uh, and then they they brought it back too soon in like 1990, and then they had different characters, so they just got forgotten. Too soon. Tisk tisk. Well, anyway, it's not too soon to wrap this up because the news is over. Time to get out that Fuber app, that feeble Uber app. The geek easy awaits for us to talk about things we're digging on. So let's do it. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting the Geek Easy, cover bands playing, drinks are poured, and we are ready to get our nerd on. So this week, I actually went to the theater, and I saw a movie called Godzilla Minus One. Charlie and I were talking about all the Godzilla stuff happening in the U.S., but Toho uh, continues to make Godzilla films. So if you think about it, they are the ones that always do the guy in the suit. So right. Godzilla minus one sounds like a album from one direction. I got to tell you, <laughs> it's a little weird, but I understand where they're yeah. going with it. I, I figured yeah. out the title. So this movie is really trying to hearken back to the beginning of Godzilla. Cause the first Godzilla movie came out in like 1954 and oh it was goodness. really a serious film talking about the horrors of nuclear war, basically right. because of Absolutely. nuclear yeah, dropping and it essentially caused uh, turmoil in the environment and created this right. monster. Also, and, and, and they, they, they kind of lean into that on the whole monarch, the legacy monster yeah. show as well. Yeah. And I think Raymond Burr was in that movie. So it was kind of a it was kind of a cool perspective. And this is why it's called Godzilla Minus One, this movie, because it takes place before that. This takes place in 1945. And oh, it's, it's a prequel. I know. You, allow it? you, allow, I know. you actually allowed it. I, I'm, I'm shocked. Exactly. This shocked. is 100 percent Japanese production, uh, a 15 million dollar budget. That's 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 a good thing to, to note. Um, this movie takes place. The main character is a kamikaze pilot who essentially I don't want to give too much away, but it happens in 1945 at the end of the war. And this is a, essentially the first appearance of Godzilla that we see. And it really deals with the the horrors of war, Japan rebuilding, all of the things that were left in rubble, and just this one character basically trying to reestablishes life, also PTSD, all these things. And it's a really good character piece. There is some Godzilla, but not much. This is really oh. about humans... It's Godzilla implied. Oh, but Todd, that flips the script on the way you felt about the Transformers movies because you're like, you know, those movies would be better if it wasn't about the people. But this was different, huh? Well, you know, well, Godzilla is known for his funny quips and all the funny things he does, <laughs> and you know, his action figures that we can. All he's enjoy. he's get, yeah. getting into great, getting into crazy situations. Yeah, so I think this is an appropriate approach to a monster movie where it's dealing with the overwhelming like destruction that that Godzilla does and um the relationships that this main character makes basically trying to reestablish his life and build a family it's really well done i was oh, wow. fully impressed it's full subtitles so yeah. just imagine when you're at the movie theater make sure you can see them well and right. um people really, really cool. ran People are really ranting and raving about this one. They're digging it. So yeah, uh, any posts I've seen by friends on social media or whatever, they're really enjoying it. So that's awesome. Yeah. And I can't believe, cause I, I wasn't sure about the facts and why they only spent $15 million. It, it is amazing looking. Uh, it wow. is truly, there's no guy in a suit in this, but it looks amazing. So I'm thinking if they can do this level of uh, just real like locations, but also yeah. with CGI with Godzilla, it's amazing. And I like awesome. some of the ingenuity that people did. Obviously, this is back in the 40s. So um, yeah. it's kind of like, how do you manage a, a, a threat like that when you don't have right. like certain things? So I really enjoyed this movie. Right. Um, and I love some of the music, Charlie, too, because it harkens back to like the old Godzilla music, which is like, dun, dun, dun. They use that. It was really cool. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's love cool. this movie. Thought it was great. Um, very happy for it. And apparently it's yeah. the biggest foreign uh, Japanese foreign film in the United States ever. Oh, wow. So yeah, oh, wow. on an audience. Well, we might, uh, we might go take a stab at this one next weekend then. Cause if, if everybody's liking it, you know, it's not like, uh, 
how bad could it possibly be? Plus, what do we have? Oh, God, Todd, we haven't even made planes to talk about Aquaman yet, which is going to be my favorite bomb of the year right there. Well, you know what? I can't even say that because this was the year that we had the Flash. Uh, but I wanted the Flash to be successful. Well, yeah. Godzilla, I just don't. I, or, or, Aquaman, I just don't want to be successful. So I think I'm going to be very pleased. <laughs> Aquaman, what did he do to you? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I'm just so, I, in a lot of ways. I'm just Since Avatar's stuck. not out this year, you need another. <laughs> I need, a, yes, I, I need something to, to, to turn my ire on to. Oh my god. Yeah, we are gonna go see that though, because my wife has already said that we need things to do with in-laws visiting for 10 days. Oh, we will boy. definitely be seeing that. Oh my goodness. Maybe multiple times. I Todd, hope there's maybe, a new maybe, cover of a Toto song. Maybe you can save the box office. Oh my goodness. Um, well, I'll go kind of quickly here because I also saw a movie uh that was that is not genre related, but the star of it was uh, an actor I respect very much. That's Paul Giamatti. Uh, and I'd been it's funny for an indie film, we had been seeing trailers for this. For months, it was like really well promoted. Um, but it is called The Holdovers. It is set in a college prep school in the year 1970 in uh, New England. So somewhere in somewhere in Massachusetts, I'm guessing, because a portion of the film takes place in Boston. Uh, but it has to do with a, uh, a very smart but withdrawn young man uh, who uh, his mother leaves him at the school. Uh, over Christmas break because she wants to take a vacation with her new rich husband. So mm. she, she talks him into staying. And apparently this always happens at this school. So there's a group of five kids that that are left over. They're holdovers. And the only people there to watch them are the janitor, the nice lady who runs the kitchen, uh, who was actually, and we watched, we rewatched Office Christmas Party last mm. night and she was the security officer. So in a much uh, more satirical role in that that film was from a number of years ago, and then Paul Giamatti, who is a pretty much washed up, uh, basically ancient history teacher who is cantankerous and nobody likes him. Um, and again, I'm not going to spoil a lot of this because I really would recommend that people go out and see it. But it's kind of about this long emotional journey and figuring out why this kid is the way he is. I mean, I already tipped it off that his mom dumps, doesn't have him home for Christmas break so she can, you know, run off and have a vacation with her new husband, who's played by Tate Donovan, who just in general often plays characters that you don't like. Um, yeah, and he was very unlikable for the short part of this hmm. film that he's in. And the mom is played by the same, uh, act, it's actress Jillian, Jillian Vigman, who plays the, um, who voices the, the the cat doctor on lower decks which i know you haven't watched the show but she's just very rude and always screaming <laughs> obscenities um not not nice. in this role but in that um so it, it's a, it's a great film again a little off the beaten path it's an indie sure. film um theater seem to have a decent amount of people in it so hopefully it's doing okay yeah. um but whether it is or it isn't you know indie films like this kind of like your godzilla movie if they made it for 15 million dollars almost any amount of money that they make uh, is, 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 is a success. Absolutely. And I was going to say a fun fact, Charlie. Um, so this is a Miramax film. Right. I, Disney used to own Miramax. Guess who owns Miramax now? Jeff Bezos. Paramount. So this movie may come to Paramount Plus. Well, then I then I put it to you that you should check it out. I yeah, I saw would, I, I also saw tra- I was wondering, I'm like, well, yeah, I, I have seen trailers for this. It looks very cute. looks very mm-hmm. heartwarming, I assume. Maybe it's not. Yes. There's somebody's killed well, or it's something. Just, you know, no, no, uh, no, nobody. No, you know, nobody dies. Nobody there. Yeah. There's your spoiler. Nobody dies. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Yeah, no, I highly recommend it. And then a little a little side uh, bit. Uh, Peter Stein, who's one of my cohorts on uh code 47 uh over on our patreon the facts geek life we've been talking about uh Battlestar Galactica, the Ron Moore version, we're in season one. We're kind of taking the whole series and breaking it up into chunks and talking about it. But for some reason, I was thinking about how much I enjoyed the finale of that show. And Todd, of course, you've seen the show, but it's been, it'll be 15 years yeah. next year yeah. since that finale was on 2009. Um, the finale, which was a little micro movie, if you watch it on Peacock, though I owned it, but it's still split up into three parts, but it's just one story. Just always kind of, it's, you know, there are people who bitch about the way this series ended. I absolutely love it and there's a lot of stuff in there that that i got kind of choked up about hmm. um it's it's just extraordinarily emotional the journeys that you see and again it's a show that was on for four seasons um there's a lot of depth and complexity to the relationships obviously uh that are resolved within this episode <clears throat> but there's a lot of stuff i think would be accessible to just the layman who was maybe watching it for the first time but um yeah a lot of the stuff like you know between the father and the son and uh, the son and his best friend and uh, uh the father and his 
uh, intended, who is dying of cancer and kind of how that goes. And, and the entire movie is about a husband and a wife rescuing their child from the evil Cylons and, and how everyone falls in behind them. And it's just, Man, it's one of those things like Endgame I could watch a million times because I love it so much. So, <clears throat> again, it's not particularly new or noteworthy, but, yeah, I just I kind of get really, really uh, choked up. That's over on Peacock. I don't know if it's Peacock Plus, but um, there has been some, you know, skimming through YouTube, there has been some talk that yet another reboot of Battlestar Galactica is finally starting to move forward with the strikes being over, so... Fingers crossed. I've always been a huge fan of the franchise. Uh, our friend, our mutual friend, Brian Cole, huge fan mm -hmm. of the franchise. Yeah, great show. Um, and yeah, it's just, it was, it was a show that even though you always have your detractors and well, why didn't this thing or that thing happen when it concluded? I thought it was, I don't know about you. I thought it was a great ending. Oh, I, 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 I pre like lost. <clears throat> I, I, I understand why it's controversial, but I thought, you yeah. know, it ended in a spot that I thought was unique and different. So I appreciated yeah. it. And, and did not see it coming. I thought it was, no. if you haven't, if you haven't seen it, I'm certainly not, you know, spoilers, who cares 15 years, I'm not going to say it, but um, it was, it was very surprising at the time how they chose to choose to end it, but I really liked it. Absolutely. And that was at a time when, uh, you know, you really only got unique science fiction shows on like sci-fi. Yeah. Who else was doing just, it at the time? Yeah. Right, right, yeah. There was no streaming, so there yeah. wasn't wasn't any of that stuff going on. So, um, yeah. So anyway, that was my, you know, it was in a hotel room for a couple of nights. And I'm like, you know what? For some reason, I'm thinking about this, so I'm just going to watch it. So, good deal. Uh, anyway, all right. Well, that wraps up <clears throat> our time. <clears throat> my good, I'm verkl I see, see, I've reclaimed. I am thinking about Battlestar Galactica, but this wraps up our time uh, in the Geek Easy. Time to skip out on the check again because I know they spit in my Tom Collins. Uh, but we've got to get. Down to Australia, got to get out that Air Qantas app, uh, Hologram Tina, and the Mutants Await to talk about a holiday horror film. Let's do it. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all in one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web based podcasting solution, it provides high quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post-production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So if you're interested in making an easy, high-quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, go to Zencaster.com slash SFU and use our code SFU. And you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome! <laughs> Thank you, Tina. The mutants have been gathered for a topic or a game to be entertained. And we're doing a little uh, shift um, inspired probably by a podcast now Charlie's a fan of is just like I have. It's uh, called um, We Enjoy. They are oh, doing. I thought, I thought you were going to struggle to remember what the name of it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, they uh, are doing. Enjoy? They're doing horror films around the holiday season. So they're doing. Right. Some I, different I have I have not tuned in in a couple of weeks, but it's there. But sometimes I get yes. to a point with all of my travels, I listen to podcasts for maybe two or three days, and then I just need some tunes, and yep. then the week is over. So yep. sometimes I miss theirs, but I do. And those guys, what were their names again? Uh, Eric and Matt. 
Eric and Mad, yes. And I know you've reached out to you should reach out to them again, see if they'd be interested in teaming up. See if I can do that. But um they did uh Anna and the Apocalypse, their first uh show of that season. We did that show last year, I believe, which we had a great time with. Uh it's the musical, Uh, it's Scottish and uh it's got zombies, high school. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, really enjoyed that one. Uh they're doing Black Christmas next week which is one of the first slasher films from 1974 fun fact with that the director of uh that also did a christmas story bob clark is his name oh gotcha yeah so we 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 did sample again uh, violent night this year we bought it because i just absolutely love that movie great movie yeah yeah great flick from last year was that last year or the year before i can't remember last year as well yeah yeah yeah, great time but yeah i so i've been enjoying and i i did want to see thanksgiving didn't get a chance to see it hopefully i'll be able to watch that right right right, right. but i i'm big i'm enjoying these themed horror films i thought oh it's christmas we don't have a lot going on so we'll do a couple of these uh for the end of the year so the first one we're doing is called it's a wonderful knife uh (laughs) this movie is currently streaming on uh amc plus or shutter depending on what you have you can also buy it if you want and this film (laughs) takes the trope of well, I'll give you the synopsis. After saving her own town from a psychotic killer, Winnie Carruthers' life is less than wonderful. When she wishes she'd never been born, she finds herself in a nightmare parallel universe where without her, things could be much, much worse. Um, director is Tyler McIntyre, and the cast includes uh, Jane Whittup, Jess McCloud, Joel McHale, Catherine Isabel, William B. Davis, Justin Long, and some other people you've never heard of. That it trailed off and it got cut off. And that's G- Jim- G- Jim- Jimmy O. Exactly. Aiden H played by Jimmy O. <laughs> yeah. So the best way I could put this movie out there, Charlie, and I think you may agree, this feels like at the level of production of a Hallmark movie. <laughs> <laughs> we did actually and it was my mother who cajoled us and like oh jonathan frakes is going to be starring in this biltmore christmas which oh, we really? watched Wonderful. and it um it was it, it was kind of fun bob picardo who is in the you know uh, was the doctor on voyager we've met him several times at cons and on the cruise and everything um it, w- it was in it very briefly and like that was fun but yeah the, the hallmark movie we actually watched one I'm not sure it really was a Hallmark movie, but it landed on either Netflix or Hulu, and it was like Jingle Bell Christmas or something. It was painfully Canadian, uh, not to knock our friend Mark, our favorite Canadian, but it was, you know, it was filmed in Manitoba. Everybody had the terrible accents, and it was just so cut by numbers. And at the end, it literally ended at a school dance with the two people who had been fighting love the whole time finally having a dance. And this... <laughs> followed a formula of its own kind yes simple, it did but. yeah so this movie is essentially about a girl who uh we find out that there is a uh a serial killer he looks kind of like an angel i guess is i don't know white white robes white uh uh opaque mask uh kind of looks like cobra commander <laughs> i guess Destro, right. maybe I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, kind of, Storm yeah. Shadow. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the no, what, yeah, no details, no features, but a, a clear. Yeah. Cobra, and there is, we go. I'm trying to point. There we yep. go. Cobra Commander. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's just like it without the hat, uh, but with a with a uh, a, a there you go. or a hood. Um, and then he would kill people with uh, candy canes. Um, is the premise. And very at the very beginning, we find out though that uh, you know people are getting killed by this person and. This is at the very beginning, so not really spoilers, to be tell you the truth. You find out, though, that the person that's doing this is the mayor of the town, and the girl who ends up taking out the murder, uh, our main character, Winnie, uh, mm-hmm. basically fries him, and because of that, I guess her life goes to hell. Like, she loses her best friend, and right. her parents all of a sudden start acting weird, is right. the best way to put it. All because she stopped a killer from killing more people and or yeah her, like you said her best friend got killed and so it was it was she should have been a hero right she stopped yeah. killing spree so yeah that right again that right away that doesn't make any sense and then they jump a year forward so now well, it's the next yeah. holiday season and yeah like, oh my life has fall apart and i didn't go away to school her, and blah 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 yeah, yeah and all the cheating this, on her yeah uh, so yeah so it's like why is her life bad because I, now i'm trying to remember the details did she end up killing him in self def it was in self defense because well, she's yeah. with her friend yeah, yeah her friend got murdered with- so she kills this guy in self defense and the town turns on her what because the guy who is the mayor who was also a serial killer was just misunderstood somehow i mean again the premise of her 
her life falling apart just doesn't doesn't really seem to make any sense. Yeah, and like all of a sudden her family's like, "Oh, get over it." Oh, they buy the brother <laughs> a truck and they give her a tracksuit, and it, it just seems so weird. The brother of the mayor, who was a TikTok star or something like that, gets mad right. and blames her for it. Yeah, it was. It threatens her to say, "I would just kill you if I could." I'm like. It was a weird tone shift that I'm like, okay, this is very odd. So then, Charlie, we get to the, you know, the whole thing with like Jimmy Stewart saying, you know, everything. I wish I was never born. Yeah, exactly. And it's the power of Aurora Borealis. Like we know uh, with (laughs) that famous Simpsons skit, Aurora Borealis. (laughs) I'd say, didn't they? uh, uh, Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So she ends up in this weird parallel world uh, where the mayor dude is still around, but because she was never born, her parents are in are, are her parents in some like weird open marriage and her aunt's this like drunk and uh well, the mom's her, a drunk now and oh the mom's yeah, yeah. The, so the, a, the, yeah the aunt the aunt is the one she's able to convince of what's going on but the mom is a drunk and sleeping with the dudes dad's absent. The dad. yeah, yeah he's around but he's just you know he's probably drinking himself into a stupor and her best friend or the person who was her best friend, who obviously doesn't know her now, uh, is you know uh, teetering on the brink of you know wanting to kill herself, and it's just hey, yeah, it's 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 definitely it's you know it's the worst timeline, you know, like your community sketch. Yeah. Um, well, but yeah, one, it, it was it was very weird because now the town is like in shambles. Everybody's a drug addict. Uh, there are now been like twenty five deaths by this killer because that she never stopped the killer. So it's like Hill Valley uh in uh Back to the Future Two yes. when Biff stole the almanac and then everything is uh everything is the darkest time. Murray's mom clock- got pimped out. <laughs> yeah the clock the clock tower is like the Trump Hotel. Yes. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well out. and then they had the one girl. So the one girl uh who they called her weirdo. So a social outcast. Nobody Very liked nice. her. But when I looked at her I'm like why is she weird? <laughs> She's nice. <laughs> right. Well, that's, that's obviously weird in the par- It's, it's bizarro world, you know, up is down. Good is bad. Bad by. Yeah. So she becomes like the, uh, ally of our main character. They were never friends. No one knows, uh, our, our main character. So she's trying to stop things from happening. And she finally comes to, to, uh, grasps and figures out that the, what caused this was basically wishing upon Aurora, Aurora Borealis uh, could change things. And so she has to figure out how to revert it. So she thinks if she kills the, the killer, that everything will work out and we'll get back to the life that she was horrible for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, yeah, we, we get to, you know, obviously we're, we're moving forward into the third act and she figures out, like you said, that she can get back, uh, but how and why and and then they throw in. So you, you have the, the two best friends, two girls that share a kiss at some point that I, I felt was like, why, why did they, it, that romantic, was not a part yeah. of the, yeah, there was, there was no romantic subtext to any of that. And all of a sudden they have what is a very romantic kiss and it, it that that essentially is it, again it just seems like it's not a part of the plot came out of nowhere yeah it came out of nowhere and it's like did they throw it in there for some kind of shock value which just drives me nuts because i throw in something romantic no matter who it is if it is relevant to the story and it had no relevance to the story you know they were friends but todd we're not going to get into a situation where it's life or death and then we're going to be making out sorry i don't think it's relevant to our friendship i hope it doesn't break your heart you know charlie that's okay um <laughs> you know, i okay. i can i can you know we, we have college yes. <laughs> our college memories <laughs> the, the Easter Bunny. <laughs> it was an experiment no um and it was it was because they did flip the script in a couple of ways which once again the tones of this movie the th- the jumps, the leaps of faith of what they went through. I mean, the fact that there was a switcheroo on the who we thought was the killer. And then we get to the fact that there's this weird, like, supernatural cult that... That, that really came out of nowhere. And I get to that bit. And again, you and I were just talking that neither of one... We, we both watched this, but we didn't really pay attention to it. You were doing... You were watching on a computer. I was in my hotel room. I was working on something else and would glance up. But we got to this part. 
And also, also I had this TV that would overheat and, and turn itself off. So I had to get up and plug it back in. What? Yeah, I know. It was, I, oh I wrote gosh. a nasty note. I wrote a nasty note to the people. Thank God you didn't start a fire. <laughs> The Hampton and Troy, they got a very nasty note. But I play, it, it, it happened during this scene. It, it happened a couple of times. I stayed there for two nights. But it, it happened then, so I had to pause it and go back, plug it in, boot it up again. And uh, so I got back to the scene, and it just makes no sense. And maybe I missed something that that was a component of the movie before we got there. So it just absolutely like – and now Justin Long, who is the mayor, is uh, just – holding summary executions in front of a clearing crowd so it was very maga uh to be perfectly honest with you and they had like eyes were changing color like it was very weird and there was no explanation for it what was causing this and to your point people were dying and right he was just he killed like the the sheriff guy he was like well i heard that you were gonna uh leave the sheriff's department to go do something else so you have to die and he stabs in the neck or something he's like what 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 why what Yes. I mean, and Justin Long, who I mentioned, I'm like, I've always been very willy nilly on the actor Justin Long. Sometimes I like him. So maybe it's because he was in that Kevin Smith movie, Walrus. God, I hated that, that so much that I can't really shake loose that image of him being a walrus. Um, but he was really, he was weird in this movie because he had the big hair helmet Your and teeth. The teeth. Yeah. And it's just, he was kind of disturbing to look at. Um, and then you throw in that scene again, you just had a lot of stuff in the third act of this film that they, it just felt like they were throwing throwing you know darts at a board that say lesbian kiss or uh uh you know public square execution or something misdirection of a bad guy which i I get the the misdirection maybe that's okay sure uh yeah and it's and this is a not an expensive movie obviously but it doesn't change the fact that somebody wrote this (laughs) right but you had no he did wasn't limited on number of keystrokes he could put in his computer i was gonna say it's kind of a george lucas situation where he just didn't he wasn't writing by committee didn't do any didn't have a writer's room didn't have anybody you know editing for him so yeah i just you know and, and again we touched upon some other horror Christmas movies that we've enjoyed, like Violent Night, which came out last year. We absolutely adored it. And that was really, it was it was an engaging story. Yeah. It didn't employ a lot of violence. Um, but at the end, there were, there were a lot of really great things that you got to like about several of the characters and the little mini arcs and things that you didn't expect, things that made you laugh, things that made you grimace, where this was just, there was nothing engaging about this. It was just kind of gross and all over the place. Yeah, and the, the funny part was, like, if you think of, like, the future you change the events of the past to impact the future in this case it was going forward so it wasn't impacting anything so when we finally do get back um everything everyone's changed become better well, people she, her life is good she, did she go back to like a whole year or no. did she go back to where she left she went back to, to where remember. she left because it was the same but everything, Christmas. But, every, but everything is fine yeah right? like they all of a sudden said oh yeah we shouldn't have told you to get over it and oh wait here's a new camera that we didn't give you and uh and the and other then, part yeah yeah she runs off to see her friend yeah. so they can spend a day together i'm like oh they're gonna have a kiss now and that plot line from the previous thing is gonna have some payoff and it didn't they just ended up uh, running, you know, walking in and uh, hanging out and watching movies or something. It's like, oh, well, I guess they're, I guess. But how did she remember? Like nobody else did, but she did. I yeah. Don't know. Yeah, you're right. There's no, I, 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 there's no rules. Bad. That's the problem with a yeah. lot of movies. If you set the rules and you establish right. them and you say this will happen and this will happen. Right. But once again, this movie, it, I feel like they had a good idea and then they didn't have anything to follow right. up with execution right proof that the uh that step one has to have a step two yeah. and, and you don't jump to step three which and, is cameras roll <laughs> and no clever kills really there was nothing like oh yeah you know somebody jammed a candy cane through somebody's mouth that's not yeah that's not clever but yeah it wasn't like you know they had like the electrocution scene which went on for like 15 seconds uh and i, I, I can't remember if that was the final kill but it was just the it, it was almost like they were, it was like Mission Impossible 2 with Tom Cruise whipping the gun around on the bike. Take seven, take eight, take nine. It was just, they, they, they hung on him and like, here's him from the side. Here's him from the top at a 45 degree angle. Here's him from the front at a 15 degree angle. They just kept going around doing that same shot like it was the money shot of the film. But it was yeah. like, 
I mean, you're right. They could have done something cool like he burst into flames. Well, Christmas that been- lights are the what electrocutes the person, or yeah, you know, exactly. impaled by a falling Christmas tree. There's so right, many like like in there. Violent Night, they had clever kills, like yeah. all the Home Alone stuff, and the you know the guy with the with the the the. Uh, bowling balls and the the yeah the ball yeah like yeah. I said rewatch that movie because great it was it, it was yeah it was it was great on a rewatch so hey you know what I don't I don't fault you for picking this we definitely got to take a sample of what's out there but uh, yeah so if you were to uh, give this one a rating of of one to ten strings of Christmas lights where do you where do you land no I'm giving three. this uh, three ghosts of Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> oh, 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 Jimmy Stewart's rolling around in his grave. I will give this uh two and a half broken candy cane. So that's yeah, two and a half broken candy cane. You had to break one. They're all broken. Fruitcake, but maybe it, we should have gone with that. <laughs> they're all broken in different segments that add up to two point five. Yeah. Yeah. This was just this was um this was not it wasn't fun no. where it, it wasn't fun or interesting no. where where you know violent like i said i keep rolling it back to violent light because that's what we watched this time last year i thought was fun and interesting yes. in, in its own ways where this this had none of those well, so. hopefully the next one will be better right exactly so are, are we keeping this going are we going to do another one next i think week? so yeah I, I gotta okay. i gotta look really quick but i think i i have a list charlie that i made about like holiday stuff so um i'll see which one you want to do uh and it's right, obviously cool. readily I'm available down. we could we can hammer up pretty quick yeah i'll give it a stab well with that it's a little bit of a shorter program this week but that is the end of the road so todd where do people find you out there uh they can follow me on threads and twitter at t oxtra and at secret friends unite on threads as well and Discord, which is where I'm very active. I'm also very getting more active on threads. You can find me there and on Instagram, uh, C3 Carpenter. Just go ahead and spell it out. Um, and again, our SFU Discord, we're very proud of that network and how we're continuing to grow it. But as always, my wife April and I do run the USS Grand Petoskey. That is one of the biggest chapters of the International Star Trek Fan Club in the world. We are based here in West Michigan, but we've helped grow chapters all over Michigan and Eastern Canada, of which I'm actually responsible uh, as regional coordinator for or that fine group of people. If you live in one of those areas or wherever you live, if you'd like to learn more about SFI, uh, please give us good Googs or just go to SFI.org or the Grand Petoskey website. Reach out to us and I'd be happy to help you out. So, well, cool. Friends, as always, thank you for joining us. I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. In a truck. Ho, 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 no. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server. Or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.